Hey there, welcome to LSAT Demon Daily. I'm Ben Olson, that's Nathan Fox. Together we're the founders of LSATdemon.com and our weekly podcast, Thinking LSAT. We have an email here from Damien. Damien says, hey guys, in the last around five months of studying, I've gone from a diagnostic score of 157 to averaging in the low to mid 170s on practice tests. I've gotten my logic games down to a typical minus zero, LR down to minus zero or minus one with an occasional minus two, but my reading comp is still ranging from minus two to minus five. I got a minus zero in reading comp recently, but have not managed to replicate it. I don't feel as if I did anything special on that attempt that I could apply consistently. Main point questions give me a lot of trouble because I often get it down to two options that seem really good and have a hard time deciding. That's your entire problem with reading comp right there, by the way. Go ahead, Ben. Well, I was going to say, we have advice for you, or I have advice, and I think you're going to agree, Nathan, that will help you not only with main point questions, but with all these other questions you're missing in reading comp. And that is articulate the main point when you're done reading the passage. If you can't identify the main point while you're reading it, or at the very least, when you're done reading it, before you go into the questions, you have a problem. Predict the answer on reading comp generally. Yep. And and that's true for main point questions more than anywhere else, but it's also true for the even the detailed questions. You know, what did the author think about this one little detailed bit? The difference between me and everybody else is that I'll cover up the answer choices and I'll think about it. I'll go, well, what did the author say about that little bit? And if I have to go back and reread, I'll go back and reread before I look at the answer choices. Everybody else just goes, what did the author say about that? Huh? I don't know. Let's see what A says. And then they start reading answer choices. And when you read answer choices, hoping that they're correct, you, you just get romanced by them. Yeah. Well, I agree with you hundred percent. You should be predicting after you read the question and before you read the answer choices. But I see this main point prediction as like the, the, the meta prediction, right? It's the prediction you make before you even get into the questions and before, and who cares if the first question is the main point question or not? I don't care. You need to know the main point and you need to come to it through your own (laughs) assessment of the passage, not through a, let me get tossed around by the answer choices and find the two are tempting. That's, you've already lost at that point. Yep. There, you you know, they're going to ask you the main point. They're also going to ask you the primary purpose, which is to prove their main point. They're going to ask you for the author's attitude, which is like, it's going to agree with that main point. point. (laughs) Yeah. It's, Half of the questions, even really detailed ones, are related to your understanding of the main point. So what do they want? Why does this document exist? The thing I say in class all the time is, hey, this document arrived in our law office. Mm -hmm. I'm the boss. I've assigned you to read this passage. I've assigned you to read this document. Yep. You're, You're coming to my office and you're telling me what the main, why is this document in my face right now? What is this? What, what is the point? <laughs> what do they want? Yep. Um, not just what, but what about it? Not the topic, but no. what about that? Not topic? a summary either. Not well, at first they told us that they had some problems last year, and then they told us that they kind of couldn't resolve those problems unless they talked to someone else. It's like, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> bottom line. What's the bottom line? What, yeah, 10 what do words. I need to walk away from with this? Yeah, I no. want 10 words out of your mouth. Choose wisely. (laughs) What 10 words are you going to choose to tell the boss why this document arrived certified mail in our law office? 10 words with sufficient detail. Sometimes people do this. They start to get it, but then they go too, like too general, right? Too broad. They're like, oh, this person has a problem. Oh, really? They have a problem. No, I hate that. (laughs) I hate the, well, it's, they go like way meta where it's like, well, it's about a debate. Yeah. Okay. About a, a debate about what, and what does the author think about that debate? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you do have to get specific, but I mean, I just, what I want people to do is to like 
focus in on what's that one little nugget. What's that one little thing? If you had just an elevator pitch, here's what this document's about in a nutshell. What's it going to say? What are you going to say? And you have to think about that. I mean, I'm thinking about that even as I'm reading the passage. Like, what's your, where are you going with this? What's your agenda? What do you want? What are you selling me here? And you do all that kind of prediction. Definitely. Yeah. Way in advance before you ever read the question. Cool. Cool. And then do it on the detailed questions as well. When they ask you some specific detail about the passage, please answer that independently of the answer choices. You know, th- whenever someone says, I always narrow it down to two, I immediately know, okay, that's because you're being too passive. Like you're, you need to answer the questions independently of the answer choices. It's not yep. about the answer choices. It's about you answering the damn question, then you'll stop. You you won't, you'll no longer find two good answers. Yeah. And that's what everyone else is doing too. So it's no points in your favor. Email daily at lsaddemon.com if you'd like to ask us a question or share some LSAT or law school admissions news. Thanks for listening.